Yes. Still reading the book, The Way of Unification in God's Providence. And we're now on page 510. Section 4, One World, number 1, the unified world that religion has been seeking. Originally, if Adam and Eve had not fallen, what would have been or what would have happened? Adam would have become the chief of his tribe and at the same time the chief of his race and the king representing his nation. In this way the world would have become one under the ideology of Adam. All of the useless ideologies have to be cleared away. We have to totally get rid of all these ideologies because they are distorting the world. Originally the ideology would have been Adam's ideology. The language would have been Adam's language. The culture would have been Adam's culture. The tradition would have been Adam's tradition. The lifestyle would have been Adam's lifestyle. lifestyle. The system would have been Adam's system. Everything would have been the system of Adam's nation. This ideology has to be one with God in God's mind. This ideology is what we call Godism. In and fallen Adam and Eve's family would a family have existed for the sake of, of just two people or for the sake of the whole universe? Now for God, to whom would the nation belong? Would it be God's nation, Adam and Eve's nation, just Adam's nation, just Eve's? Would that nation belong to God and Adam and Eve, who all have, it, have a common purpose? That nation would belong to Adam and Eve, who are centered upon God. If that nation expanded to the world level, then that nation would be the world centered upon God. You have to understand this. What does Satan's world consist of? There are so many various nations. They have not been united as one. God wants to unite or to wipe them out. This is the way for people to go. Even though Satan has opposed us by, by every possible means, in the end, if we do not establish such a God-centered world, then we cannot bring about the ideal. Therefore, if everybody becomes like God, we cannot bring, we, then Satan cannot exist. If we can see God's existence in each person's character, then a perfected man a worldwide family, a worldwide nation can be achieved. Everything will be achieved if we become this kind of person. Until now, what has Christianity been thinking? What has Christianity been yearning for? It is to meet God, to meet the bridegroom as a bride and to meet their children and to establish a tribe with them and to build one worldwide nation by establishing the race that can restore the world. 
This is the reason why religious people try to witness to even more people. We have to unify the world centered on the truth. So all religious people have to build the chosen people by witnessing. Then unify the world as one hometown, making the people of the world their own relatives as God's people. The Korean race is in the position of descendants of the elder son. They are the descendants who have believed in religion as well as the descendants of the elder son. You Koreans have to become one with Westerners, with white people and black people. The thing that can unify us is love. It is love that can connect us with God's flesh and blood. What God likes most is the culture of love. Does God need money, power, or knowledge? To design and build and build a good house requires many materials, such as bricks and doors. But most important thing is to have the essence of total beauty and harmony. What God desires from people is not that they have a lot of money or become scholars. In the Bible, it says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first commandment. The second commandment says, you must love your neighbor as yourself. These are amazing words. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the chapter on love speaks of faith, hope, and love, and the grace of this is love. But people didn't understand this. What does it mean to love with your whole heart and mind and soul? It means that you have to love even risking your life. All of you have you experienced loving someone completely? Have you loved your husband completely? Have you loved your teacher completely as his disciple? Have you loved your nation completely? Nobody has loved anything completely. So we need a model person. We need a model of true person. By doing this, true per people who follow that model can be expanded into the world. You cannot establish the ideal or the unified world if yourself are imperfect. It cannot be accomplished in ignorance. So God tried to send one perfected person in Israel who had a total understanding of God's providence. And he tried to connect the Israelites to him. That is why God made a promise to send the Messiah centered on God's sovereign nation. It had to start from Jesus. It was possible to build it only when Jesus and the Israelites united absolutely. Through accepting the Messiah, immature people had to perfect themselves, complete the family, race, and nation, and obey all of Jesus' will and in unite with it. The Israelites who met the Messiah did not understand that God sent him not only for themselves, but also for the world. 
We're still on page 511. The goal of unification thought is to establish one nation centered on God. This is the nation of one sovereignty, one family, one people, one land, and one culture. They are connected by one blood lineage centered on true parents. In such a nation, everyone can fulfill the pledge to become an ideal heir through establishing the one realm of the heart. We can fulfill the Bible's commandment to love your enemy. We're now on page 512. Until now, religion has emphasized living your home. But the last religion, the worldwide unification church, emphasizes living your nation. White people has to go beyond white people. Black people has to go beyond black people. Yellow people has to go beyond yellow people. This is happening for the first time because of me. So you must understand that whatever I declare is the final commandment. Japanese members have to come out of Japan if I say give up Japan and come on, come out. When I go to Africa I may say live America and come to Africa. Everyone should come without any excuses to say, oh I don't like, I, I don't like, I want to stay here. It's just the same as Lot's wife. It is exactly like life in Sodom and Gomorrah. To which group do you belong? God's will is for one nation and one world. We are proud of one sovereignty, one people, and one nation. Everything we do is to fulfill that. We pledge one parent, one tradition, and one blood lineage. Where do you belong? You belong to heaven. You are already in paradise. You are not Americans. You are the people of heaven who do not belong to the earth. The earth is completely filled with all kinds of worthless junk. Where are you heading? We are going to the heavenly family, heavenly race, heavenly nation, heavenly world, and heavenly universe. We have to go until we reach that level. If someone considers the whole world as his nation and all of the people as his brothers and sisters, and inherits this tradition, then he can surely go to the nearest place in the heavenly nation. That is the theory. When you go to the kingdom of heaven, don't think I'm going to take my mother and father and sons and daughters. You must think that you want to take the nation to heaven with you. I have lived for that purpose until now. That is why I can become the central person in the spirit world. This is the way that God thinks. True parents think and the way true children and you should think. There are no boundaries in the world that God wants to create. There would be no conflict between black and white races or between good and evil. Everything has been divided even in the family between husband and wife, between parents and children as well as between black and white. Good and evil have fought 
from this situation the Lord of the second advent has to make one world that does not have any boundaries through overcoming racial problems. He has to unify the family that has been divided and he has to build the peaceful kingdom of heaven on earth. What is the kingdom of heaven? What will the kingdom of heaven on earth be like? It is the world where the church stays with God always, where there are no communists, where nobody doubts God's existence. In that world, everyone believes that God is his own father, and there is no Satan, and none of Satan's temptations. The world that God rules is the kingdom of heaven. This is the world where God lives with us. We're now on page 513 and tomorrow we'll be leading or reading number two, all mankind and brothers and sisters, one family. This is an, uh, a long topic, about two or three pages. And today we started with reading on page 5, 10, section 4. One world, the unified world that religion has been seeking. So uh, is there anybody else who wants to share about our reading today? Yes, good morning, Randy. I just wanted to share that the one thing that really um, stuck with me that, that came out was uh, a whole discussion on love. My father was talking about the culture of love and the kingdom of love, and that's really what has been lost from the very beginning, God's love, true love, and um, it's that we're restoring this, and that the root, the foundation is love, and so love. Um, it is our daily mission to embody it and to carry it out into the society that we're in. It's not an easy task, um, but this is the this this is what we have been tasked with in our restoration. So uh, that, that uh, just really stuck out uh, as a kind of an encapsulation of everything the Father was talking about in his words this morning to me. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Randy. Well, the part that you uh, reading, sharing with us this morning about how we are not living in a different world and the Father gives a commandment that it has to be fulfilled. And it reminds me of the church of God and how we go day to day uh, doing our activities and we see people who literally are, are dead. They, you know, they're, dead. They're, they're, not, they're not even in the same world. So Father, he, he gave a command, like he said, that the Japanese have to embrace go out, he said, the actors have to go out. He said that uh, uh, we are the people who are beyond the races. Yes, yeah, so he said here uh, on page 512, until now religion has emphasized leaving your home, but the last religion, the worldwide unification church, emphasizes living your nation. So he said white people go have to go beyond white people, black people, 
have to go beyond black people and yellow people have to go beyond yellow people. This is happening for the first time mm -hmm. because of me. So you must understand that whatever I declare is the final commandment. Final commandment? Yes. So he says, for the, the Japanese members have to come out of Japan, if I say give up Japan and come out, and when I go to Africa, I may say also, uh, leave Africa and come to America. And everyone should come without any excuses. Right. And to say, I don't like it, I, don't want, I want to stay here, it's just the same as Lot's wife. Moore. Yes. Mm -hmm. So anybody else wants to share about our reading today? What is striking here is uh, on further on page uh, 512, where are you heading? We are going to the heavenly family, heavenly race, heavenly nation, heavenly world, and heavenly universe. We have to go until we reach that level. If someone considers the whole world as his nation and all the people as his brothers and sisters and inherits this tradition, then he can surely go to the nearest place in the heavenly nation. This is the, the theory. So I think we are in Chungal Guk, mm -hmm. and of course we're carving out, you know, a heavenly family, heavenly nation, and eventually heavenly world and heavenly universe. So any other re uh, reflections or any inspiring words? Uh, in the last days, uh, Heavenly Parents said he will pour his spirit upon all flesh. And uh, he shall be our God and we shall be his people. And I'm, I was thinking about it the other day. I said, I'm so glad that uh, our, our true parents are Korean. <laughs> I was so glad God, he, he, he really, he brought that one home. I'm going to tell you that like this. Look, they got it done. Father and mother got it done, okay? They're a very strong nature. And father determined to succeed. And he just, he just kept it moving to the day he ascended into heaven. So, uh, you know, it's the truth that out there is like Solomon and Gamora out there. It's all kinds of negative thoughts still circulating. However, because of our education and uh, our two parents educating us, the eight texts and the 2,000 volumes of information from heaven and more coming, we're able to develop a, a, a new character within our own selves. See, I, I, I try to do that every day. How can I become a better daughter, a better wife, a better sister, or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm always inspired, and we almost finished this this book of, of webinar. So we're gonna have to decide what we're gonna take on next. Okay, anyone else? Almost finished. Yes. Any other reflections? Yeah, we can, yeah, offer that, but uh, we're looking for another book, so, uh, another book. yes, we're almost done with this book, we're just about maybe 25 pages more. And maybe when uh, yeah, Reverend Olber might bring a book here so that we can read it uh, through. So uh, if there's no other reflection, let's all rise and have 
unison prayer. Our most loved heavenly parents, we're so grateful to read and learn about your wisdom. We're so thankful also that you have let us come up from even my nation to come all the way here to America. We pray that here we can always live in harmony with all kinds of people from all over the world. And we pray that we can really bring ourselves to the heavenly nation, the heavenly world, and we pray that we can invite all the people who are just walking around this church. We pray that they'll be touched by our love, and we pray that through your mercy we can even bring them in and let them know about your words and your divine mercy and your peace messages and all the recommended books that uh, you have instructed us to give to them. We pray that your autobiography will be known to all over the world as a peaceful and global, peace-loving citizen. We pray that as we give this link and we give this book, we can fulfill more than even 430 books. And we pray that in some other countries they are looking for 430 couples by themselves. We pray we can also fulfill it in our lifetime, restoring our tribe, restoring our nation. And we pray that you use us as your instruments, our heavenly parents. We pray that we can bring here heaven here on earth. And really we can bring the second generation and their third even the third generation, but to you and all our friends and relatives, they can bow to you in this lifetime. We pray that you guide us people who can help us, who can bring in more people, who will even be better than us. And we pray that we can really look at all the other people in this world as God's temple. That, as we have said today, that it will. When so we have a heavenly have, world, it will be a world where there is always good. The world and even Satan is not there to and his temptation. We pray for this world and, and we pray for the unity of our mind and body. We can live we can give our spouses and unity and and against all, to all the things in this world centered on you, our heavenly parents. And through love. And we pray all this in all our names and in my name. As an actual Francis, seek it on blood civil family. Ah, Jew. Ah, Jew. Ah, Jew. Uri, yes,
Good morning to the fruit children. Mm. And good morning to you and the true grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And to all brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning, Diane. Everybody, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Reverend Oliver. Good morning, Nita. Have a great and wonderful day. Bye-bye. Thank you. And you also. Goodbye. Okay, you're welcome. Bye -bye.